Welcome to the Video Dictionary. My patrons over on Patreon.com have elected a new word for the Word of the Month video. And I think we've come to an equitable arrangement. Equity. Noun. Treating groups differently based on perceived advantages and disadvantages in an attempt to reach equal representation for the disadvantaged groups. Also, the value of shares of stock in a company or the amount of principal that has been paid on a mortgage. History and etymology. The Latin word aquitus meant uniformity, symmetry, kindness, conformity, or evenness, and is the origin for both equality and equity. Unlike equality, equity didn't come directly into English from Latin. It found its way through the old French word equité. Equity came into English in its current form in the early 14th century, and at the time it meant the quality of being fair, equal, and impartial in dealing with others. English Equity Courts Prior to the 14th century, English law was governed by what was called common law, and by this time common law courts were overly technical and tended to take a long time to come to a judgment. The only other option for someone seeking a legal remedy would be to plead directly to the king. As the common law courts became more cumbersome, people started coming to the king for remedies. And as his caseload grew, the king began delegating this task to his lord chancellors. These lord chancellors were considered the keeper of the king's conscience. They would try and make decisions in these cases according to what the king would decide. These courts became known as courts of chancery or courts of equity. And as time went on, they began to establish a body of law known as equity law. These equity courts were the first to recognize trusts. A trust is where one person can own property, but the rights to the property belong to another and they created several new legal remedies, such as injunctions and specific performance. These remedies, after they were applied, were referred to as equities. This appears to be the origin of equity in the financial sense, where it means equity equals asset minus liabilities. When you get a mortgage to buy your home, you don't really own your home. The bank holding the mortgage does, but the bank is holding the deed to your home in trust. The portion of the mortgage that you have paid off is your equity in your home. That's your ownership of your home. It can also refer to the percentage of a business you own when you hold stock in a business. But when Point Curation, one of my patrons over on Patreon, selected equity as the word for this video, I think he may have been referring to it in its postmodern usage in the current social justice movement. The use of the word equity has increased in the realm of education and politics lately. A great example of what is meant by equity in this way is the image of the three people trying to watch a baseball game over a fence. It's a very simplistic but effective explanation of what is meant by equity as opposed to equality. The image works well within a paradigm of resource redistribution. It's an example of from each according to their ability to each according to their need. If someone is distributing money or things in an attempt to make everyone equal, they would need to distribute the boxes in the way the equity side of the diagram would describe. In the image, it's easy to see where the inequalities lie and it's easy to see the solution to equalize everyone in this situation. But because the world is much more complicated than this particular situation, many times equity-based decisions in society now come down to decisions of conscience, just like in the equity courts of old. It's about doing what feels right as opposed to following a set of objective rules. And just like a saying about these old English equity courts, a decision made based on equity can be like basing the length of a foot on the size of the feet of the chancellor making the decision. 
Prescription and Commentary Professor Jordan Peterson answered a question about the difference between equity and equality and why it's dangerous in one of his Q&A live streams. Here it is, in his own words. Could you please tell the difference between equity and equality and why is equity dangerous? Well, it's not actually equity and equality, it's equity and equality of opportunity. Well, you know, it's a truism, I think, that's agreed upon by liberals and conservatives alike that the interests of individuals and society are best served by opening the door to the participation of all who are qualified regardless of their of attributes in domains that have nothing to do with the qualifications for the position. So imagine that as a worker, um, and that would include managers, executives, etc. As, as a worker, you have a function like a tool. You're a tool. And, and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be too down on that. It's it's good to be good for something. And um, we, it's in society's best interest that those who are able to be the most efficient tools are the ones that are placed in the position. And so you want to open up the competitive landscape to all players, not least so that society can most effectively exploit the people who are most productive. Now, it also has the side benefit of allowing individuals to utilize their talents and to take their place in the social world. But people are very diverse in their abilities, like incredibly diverse in their abilities. And that's mostly evident, for example, in the domain of intelligence, you know, because while the, the, the range that includes the majority of people runs from an IQ of about 85, or let's say 70, to an IQ of 130, although there's plenty of people who are outside those domains. It's like at 70, you're pretty intellectually impaired, right? You're not going to graduate from high school with an IQ of 70, and except under very, very extreme circumstances. With an IQ of 83, which is about 10% of the population, 85 is 15%, you're going to have a hard time reading well enough to follow instructions. You know, and with an IQ of 115, you're going to do pretty well at a, a sort of mid-level community college. And so, and an IQ of 145 is going to prepare you for like high success in complex domains, say like law or, or, or managerial positions where the environment is transforming very radically. There is immense differences between people in their cognitive ability and so, and in their conscientiousness and in their negative emotionality and, you know, and in their energy levels and, all, and in their creativity and all sorts of traits. And because of that, that individual diversity, there's no reason to assume that there is going to be equality of outcome and that's what equity is the only way given the wide range of human capacity um first uh, for you don't want to uh organize your society such that every single category of outcome has exactly proportional representation from every single possible category of person because that isn't <sighs> You, you have to use so much social force in order to make that occur that the consequences, the negative consequences, will far outweigh the benefits. It's better to open up the marketplace to allow a very large range of hierarchies to emerge and then to let people compete for their position, to compete and cooperate for their own positions. And the other problem with equity is like, who the hell is going to make the, who's going to decide which groups are going to be categorized? You want to, here's an example for you. Let's imagine you stratified the population by IQ, which, which we do, by the way, although, although we don't do it as evidently and obviously as we do, say, by sex or perhaps even by race. Are you, would you actually recommend that an equal number of people be drawn from every category of IQ to be surgeons? I mean, that's palpably absurd. So there's too much social engineering required to produce equity of outcome. Now, well, having said that as well, um, the, the, the historical data on equity are absolutely clear. The societies that have tried to aim at equity are the terrible communistic societies of the 20th century, and they were so goddamn, mi so unbelievably um, murderous and, and counterproductive that it, it beggars the imagination. And so I can't even believe we have a conversation about equity because it's such a pathological idea. It's, it's completely invalidated by the historical data. So... There was one point Peterson made that I find particularly scary. Who is going to decide which groups are going to be categorized? It's just like the equity courts of old, and the rulings being different based on whoever was in charge. And I would add to that, 
how are they going to enforce these rulings? Let's return to the three people at the baseball game for an example. If each person trying to watch the baseball game each owns one of the boxes, and none of them want to give up their box, how do we resolve this situation? We could try and convince the tall person to voluntarily give up their box. We could trade the tall person something they want in exchange for the box. Both of these are great solutions to the equity problem, and neither of them require force or coercion. But what if the tall person still doesn't want to give up their box? Well, that's when we need force or coercion to step in. The people could form a democracy and vote on who gets what box. But if the tall man doesn't want to give up their box, they need to threaten him with violence or force to enforce their ruling. Another option is they could set up a dictatorship with the most disadvantaged person as the ruler. But still, the tall person may refuse to give up their box, and the ruler will need to threaten him with violence or force to enforce the ruling. It's this force or coercion that causes states that focus on equitable outcomes to become despotic and murderous. It's the monopoly on force contained within the government and the state that causes the slide into totalitarianism. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this exploration of the word equity, please subscribe for more explorations of the words we use every day. And make sure you like the video. As I mentioned before, this word was selected by my patrons over on patreon.com and maker support. Follow the links below to become a patron and help decide what direction this channel goes. Check out my new website, I just built it over on Squarespace. The link is also below, and I'll see you next time. Till then, keep learning.